Saxon Algebra 2, Lesson 3. Welcome to my nighttime studio. I am experimenting with getting some lights to illuminate my page so that I can um, teach you at night and you can still see what the heck I'm doing. My regular lighting isn't too good. Tonight I'm using some of the lighting that my daughter uses. She teaches English online to kids in China. And so she teaches at our nighttime because it's their daytime. So she uses lights for different purposes than me, but I'm experimenting with what she's got and I'm gonna buy something for myself. So please give me feedback, I'll be asking you. Um, you don't have to think of it, I'll, remind, I'll remember to ask you, but um, I'm gonna be asking you to give me feedback as to whether you could see the page clearly, whether there were any bad shadows, um, just how well this works for you. So if you have any strong opinions, I look forward to hearing from you. Lesson three, um, here's the good news, you guys. We are climbing down off Mount Crazy and we are going to have a lesson that is like normal and quick and to the point. No more of these epic sagas of lessons that last for an hour. Of course, I'm gonna sit here and talk for to, to fill in for the lack of material, but um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna stop in just a minute and teach you this lesson. It has got one, two, three, four examples, and we're gonna be done in a very reasonable amount of time. Okay, this is called evaluating expressions. And here's the way it works. John says, evaluate x squared y minus y if, that's an x, You remember these. Basically, we're given this expression and we have to plug in these values and then simplify, right? Uh, not a big deal. The most important thing to remember is to use buckets. The reason we wanna use buckets is because it's super easy, if you don't, to mess up signs and to get confused about what's going on between the numbers. So we look at the original expression and we copy it, putting in buckets for every letter. So there's the x squared, and then we're gonna multiply it by y, and then, oh, I shouldn't have written that. And then we're gonna subtract y. All right, I'm just gonna scribble that up. My bad. All right, so now we've, we've rewritten the expression using just empty buckets, oops, and now we will plug in these numbers. X is minus two, and y is minus four. And now we see why the buckets are useful because we would be so confused. We, it's like, would we be subtracting? We don't even know. Now we can simplify. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is simplify this exponent. This is, I can't get at that minus sign, it's protected. So this is minus two times minus two. So that would be positive four. And then we multiply it by minus four. And then this can be simplified by those, right? All right, so now I'm gonna clean this up. That would be minus 16 plus four, and that's minus 12, final answer. Yay! All right, okay, example. 3.2, this one's gonna get a little bit longer. I'm gonna write the original expression up here. A minus B minus A. See, it's just confusing. There's so many minus signs. And then A equals minus two, B equals four. So I'm gonna rewrite this. Notice that these parentheses that were already in the expression, I exaggerated and I made them really big so that I can keep track of what's going on there. And then this is the A minus B minus A, closing parentheses, minus AB. Okay, 
Now I'm ready to plug in. Let's do the a's first. That's a minus two. That's a minus two. That's a minus two. And then four, four. Okay, simplifying. Um, we know that we're going to follow our order of operations. I didn't really talk about it here because it was relatively straightforward. Our order of operations is, we always do anything in parentheses first, then we do exponents or square roots, then we multiply or divide, then we add or subtract. I kind of wrote that in the middle of the last problem. But this is the symbols that summarize um, our order of operations and help us keep it straight. So let's do that first. Let's work on what's going on in the parentheses first with these. Now some of these parentheses mean multiplication. Others have actual work to do inside of them. So here's what I'm gonna do. That minus two stays there. This becomes minus four plus Two. So now I can add that and that's minus two. Notice I'm keeping the parentheses the same size. It helps me just make sure that everything's okay. Um, and then these parentheses, there's no work to do inside of them. They just mean multiplication. Okay, now I can multiply this and multiply this. Minus two times minus two is positive four. This I'm gonna keep, negative two times four is negative eight. These two go together to make a plus. My final answer is positive 12 this time. So you quickly can see that these are relatively straightforward, but they can become quite tedious and complicated uh, because of all of the order of operations business that's going on in there. Um, there's your information. Some people like to remember this as PEMDAS, right? This is another way of remembering it. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Whichever floats your boat. I just like this better because it's the pictures of what I'm doing. Um, enough, that's enough on that one. All right, we have a second topic, which is called adding like terms. This is another one that can be, these are less tedious, I think. Simplify by adding like terms. Now I'm gonna copy it down just the way it's written in the book. 3xy, I won't say it out loud, that's boring. Okay, I copied this just the way it is in the book, but it highlights something that I would change the next time I do it. We look through this and we remember, okay, what's the rule here? If the letters match the same in multiple terms, we can combine the numbers at the front of them, right? Uh, okay, so we see here's X's. And here's a plain number. We can That won't have anybody to go with. But these guys are the problem children, and we could have written this better. Here's the thing. If the letters are the same, just in a different order, then those are like terms, because order doesn't matter in multiplication. But it's confusing because John did this just to try and trip us up. What I do when I'm copying down the problem I always rewrite the letters into alphabetical order so that they're gonna look exactly the same to me. So I would have written this one as 3xy, and then what I would have written minus 2x plus four, and then when I got to this, I would have said minus six, oh wait, I'm gonna flip those. So that I would have immediately seen that these two match as well, right? And we already said those match and that guy's by himself, all right? And that's the order that I tackle them in. I take the most complicated expression first, so it's 
3xy minus 6xy, so that's going to be minus 6xy. Then I'd compare these two, that's going to be plus x and then plus 4. Double check my answer. Oh, wait. I said minus 3, but I wrote minus 6. Right? Six, 3 minus 6 is minus 3. Minus 3 x, and then John wrote that as y x. He's just being obstinate. I don't know why. But I like alphabetical order always. 3.4. Last example, you guys. Simplify by adding like terms. Okay, here comes a maelstrom, an absolute tropical storm of messy terms. Let me just copy it down. You copy it with me. And let's just all weep silently together. All right, oh, John, that's disgusting. How could you? So take a minute to mourn this tragedy and then go, okay, right now it doesn't look like anything matches, but we've got quite a few of the same letters and we've got some negative exponents that are gonna shift things around. So let's start by getting rid of all these negative exponents and writing everything in alphabetical order and see if that cleans some things up. So I'm gonna start here. All right, a to the minus two, that tells me the three stays up top, the b stays up top, but this a is gonna go downstairs, a squared, and he's gonna chill with that c. Okay, so the first term is now cleaned up. Minus sign stays there. This one is fine, right? And look, these actually match, right? A B and then A squared C in the denominator. Huh, all right, so that's cool. Plus, okay, now let's try this one. These two minuses are gonna go down to the basement, so we're gonna be left with seven up top and a B. Oh, I like it. A squared C in the basement. Look, they all match. Yay. What about this one, though? It's minus four. Now we can write, ah, I double check because that's like, this a squared looks like it's gonna stay in the numerator and I would like for it to go downstairs. Maybe that's a minus sign, maybe I copied it wrong. So I go back to the book and I double check and I go, nope, I didn't copy it wrong, that's exactly right. So I can reorder it, but nothing's gonna go downstairs. So, what do I have? I have three terms that match exactly and a fourth one that's off by that a squared term. So what that means is I can combine these, but that one just sits by himself. So three minus four plus seven. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add the two positive numbers to get 10 and I'm gonna subtract the four. And so my answer is minus six B over a squared c, and then I this one just trails along. There's nothing I can do to fix it. It's a freak child, if you don't mind me saying so. But you know, freak children are great. I have no problem with that. That's our final answer. Yay! And I have not been star or smiley facing my answers. Oh yeah, I did there. All right, so shame on me. You guys, we're done, that's it, that's the lesson. So, go ahead and do the practice problems, which are just like we did, and then the problem set with some, some wicked geometry for you. And then oodles and boodles of, oh my gosh, I weep for you. Look at that, 17 through 22 are disgusting. Okay, and the last ones aren't so bad. All right, so go ahead and do the odds on those Yay, we're done. Goodbye.